in this lab, we're going to continue with the antenna, me, uh, antenna training and measuring system by LabVolt. So uh, in, the, in the previous lab, using the same system, we used a Yagi Uda antenna as a transmitting antenna, and it was mainly operating close to one gigahertz. Now, our plan is, go, is to go to a higher frequency, in particular, 10 gigahertz. So this antenna is not appropriate for that frequency, so we have to change it. And now our new transmitting antenna would be a horn antenna, this horn antenna in particular, and that's going to be providing for us 10 gigahertz radiation. So to start mounting the transmitting antenna to set up the new experiment, we first need to remove the Yagi Uda antenna from the transmit mast. So I'm just gonna... The cable. And this is my Yagi Uda antenna that I don't need anymore. So I'm just gonna place it here. Now, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna first show you this uh, horn antenna. So as you see here, I have a piece of waveguide. So this is the piece of waveguide. And as you learned in the class, it's going to flare out to form a bigger aperture. So you're essentially going from a small aperture of a waveguide to a bigger aperture. So that's the way that we are creating the horn antenna. Now, the fundamental mode of this waveguide has electric field right now perpendicular. So when, when essentially you excite your horn antenna with this electric field in this direction, the polarization from horn would be also vertically polarized. So if you need horizontally polarized, you essentially need to rotate everything by 90 degrees. Now to excite this horn antenna, I need to bring a SMA cable to it. So to do that, I'm going to use this piece here. So if you look at this piece, I have my waveguide and there is a SMA port here. So I, I can essentially bring the signal through this port to the, to the waveguide system. So the only thing you need to do is essentially through these holes. So this, for example, this hole and this hole, you connect these two waveguides firmly and then you bring a SMA cable to this SMA port and then you excite the whole system. So to do that, to make a firm connection, we're going to align the holes of this waveguide with this waveguide like this. And then lab vault training systems comes with some something called quick lock. And there is a pin. This pin is going to go through the holes. And then we're going to use that to make a firm connection. So I'm just going to have one here and one on the opposite side. So these are my quick lock, and I'm just going to bend them like this. So now, now they are very tight, and you have essentially one system right now that you excite this antenna from this SMA port, and then you're going to have electric field in the vertical direction, and then you're going to get uh, radiation with vertical polarization in this direction. And as I mentioned earlier, you can rotate it 90 degree and you get now horizontal polarization. Now I need to mount this transmitting antenna on the transmit mast. Uh, as, as you see, this mast is not appropriate for this antenna. So I'm just going to change the mast. And I'm going to use a new mask. So this new mask that I have here, there is a hole here. So essentially, that hole is for, to, for inserting the antenna, the transmitting antenna. So to, uh, to use this, there is another connection here. As you see, there is a pin here. And then this pin is going to go through that hole. And then I can mount the antenna on this. So I'm just going to place this on the side of the transmitting antenna. This is just for mounting purposes. So I have it like that. So I'm going to use this. So let's put that here. OK, and I'm going to mount the transmitting antenna right now in the horizontal polarization. So. So if, if this is the cable coming from here, 
this would be essentially the direction of the electric field so it's going to be vertically polarized so if i want it to be horizontally polarized i need to rotate it 90 degree like that so again look at the sma cable is supposed to go through here so the electric field is vertical now if i rotate it 90 degree that would make it horizontally polarization and then i'm just going to place it here and now I can tighten this. And that essentially becomes the transmit antenna. We have now set up our transmitting antenna, the horn antenna. And now we need to go and set up our receiving antenna or the antenna under test. So for this experiment, the antenna under test is an open-ended waveguide antenna. So, uh, so this is essentially an open-ended waveguide antenna. So as you see, this is a waveguide, and then you just leave the end essentially open-ended, and now you have an open-ended waveguide antenna. So the wave, the guided wave is gonna travel through the waveguide, and at the, at the open aperture is gonna radiate out. We've seen that in the lecture in the class. Now, again, similar to that, we need an input port to excite the whole system, and that essentially serve as the input port for us. So you see here, we have the SMA connection. So if I can just connect these two, I can excite with the SMA cable from here, and then guided wave are gonna travel in the structure, and then from this open-ended, it's gonna be uh, radiating outside. And if I, if I have it like this, if the cable goes through here, then then the, I'm going to have vertical electric field in the eighth guide in the fundamental mode, and then from from the from the open end, it's going to radiate outward, and the polar, polarization would be like that. If I want to change the polarization, if I change, rotate everything by 90 degree, then I have this polarization. Now to connect these two, again, I'm going to use this similar thing that we used for the uh, horn so we're going to use that and one more on the opposite side and we're just going to do that so that's essentially our antenna under test an open-ended waveguide antenna just one thing i wanted to mention to you is that open-ended waveguide antenna of course comes at different frequency range uh, for example, we have, if, if it's bigger, that then essentially means you are operating at a lower frequency range. For example, consider this open-ended waveguide antenna. So this is for, the, for mounting. So the antenna itself is from here. So that's the excitation port. So you excite it at this point, and that's essentially the open end of the waveguide. So, I mean, compared to the uh, antenna that we are testing right now, this operates at a lower frequency range. Okay, now now that we uh, we've talked about these uh, this antenna, we need to go and mount it on on uh, on the mast. But this mast again is not appropriate. Uh, for us, so I'm just gonna remove the antenna under test from here. So I'm just gonna remove it. And I'm gonna have a new mast. So the new mass would be similar to the one that we use for the horn antenna. I'm going to place it here. And here I have a hole. So to, to mount the antenna, I essentially need a pin that can be connected here. Then, then this pin is going to go through this hole. And then I can mount the antenna like that. So... So I just connected a pin to the waveguide and I'm just gonna connect it here and that and then I need to tighten it and 
adjust it and now the receive antenna is almost ready similar to lab one when we mounted the antenna under test we need to make sure that it's aligned with the uh, axis of rotation so the axis of rotation of this system is here so this is essentially the axis of rotation we're rotating around this axis and right now the aperture of the antenna is right here so clearly uh, I mean, we could define the axis of this antenna right on the aperture, approximately. So this is not aligned with this one. Uh, so we, what we're going to do, I think the first step would be to rotate this. And then we have to check if that's on top of the axis of rotation or not. So we could consider for example this to just check if it's gonna be on that it's it's a slightly off but I think for the accuracy of this lab it's it's reasonably good so if I put the axis of rotation here so if you continue that you'll see that it's almost aligned with the axis that goes through the aperture of the horn antenna so if you accept this level of accuracy you can start tightening the receive mast now that we've tightened it we can also connect the sma cable so that's the input port of the antenna Okay, so I think our system is now ready. Just a couple of things here is that if you look at the SMA cable, it goes like that into the waveguide and the electric field inside the waveguide will have this polarization. And when, you, when this is going to radiate, you're going to have horizontal polarization too. And we right now we've set up the transmit antenna also in the horizontal mode so uh, horizontal polarization so they would be matched to each other okay let's talk about e plane and h plane of open ended waveguide antenna so uh, as you know we're gonna test open va open ended waveguide antenna using the lab volt measurement system So sometimes we refer to this as OEW. So in, as we explained in the class, if we consider X, Y plane, this could be, for example, the aperture of our open-ended waveguide antenna. So as you already know, the electric field over the aperture of the open-ended waveguide antenna in the fundamental mode has a cosine taper structure. So we have a maximum right at the center and then it goes to zero because of the boundary condition here. So the tangential electric field at the surface of perfect electric conductor PEC needs to be zero. So that's essentially our uh, distribution of electric field. I should have plotted it uh, in a symmetrical fashion, but this is unfortunately not symmetrical but remember that both both sides are the same now if we want to see which plane is e plane we first need to realize that the, the direction of maximum radiation is toward u so it's toward z axis so z axis would be outside the whiteboard so so that, that's the direction of maximum radiation the direction of electric field is clear here is around y so if i make 
a plane using these two vectors y and z that's going to be my e plane so it's y z plane and if this is your e then that would be your h so this is my e and h plane would be perpendicular to that so my h plane would be x z and if i want to write them in terms of a spherical coordinate if i'm on the y axis here and i consider z i'm at actually phi equal 90 degrees and if i am on x axis here and i consider also z so anything on x z would be phi equal zero so this would be my E plane and H plane. One thing that you should notice here is that the size of the antenna along X is larger than the size of the antenna along Y because the size of the antenna along X is larger than the size of antenna along Y. We, we might expect that the directivity in the H plane, which actually contains X, becomes larger than the directivity in the E plane, which consider this Y axis here. And if that's the case, then we could also expect that half power beam widths in the H plane becomes a smaller than half power beam widths in the E plane. Now we're gonna go measure it and we're gonna uh, later on determine uh, directivity from half power beam widths using the approximate equations that you can find in the student manual of your uh, laboratory assignment. Okay, so I'm gonna be uh, talking a little bit more about E plane and H plane because it's easier to see this bigger open-ended waveguide antenna. I'm just gonna use that for explaining how the antenna should be mounted now so remember that if this is our open-ended waveguide antenna this is the direction of the electric field at the aperture so that's my that would be the direction of electric field at my aperture that's the direction of maximum radiation so that's essentially my e plane so the direction making by the e field and the direction of maximum radiation that's your e plane now, if you want to measure the antenna in the E plane, so of course you, you need to rotate in the E plane, but this rotation is not as straightforward in this case. So what we do is that we rotate the whole thing. So that then we can still rotate like that. So again, instead of rotating like this, we rotate the whole thing and now we can rotate like that. So that would be my E plane, but remember, now that I've rotated my antenna, that's the direction of electric field. So when you are testing it for copole, the antenna that is transmit, which is this antenna, should also be horizontally polarized. So that essentially becomes my E-plane copole measurements when I'm moving like that. Now, if you want to, if you want to perform cross-pole E-plane, then of course you keep this, uh, the antenna on the test the same, but then you rotate the polarization of the transmitting antenna 90 degree. Now let's go to H plane. Now what is the H plane of this antenna? The H plane of this antenna, so again, let me, this was a direction of electric field, therefore this was my E plane. So you realize that this is going to be your H plane. So if the antenna is like that, this is H plane, so the antenna can simply look, rotate like this. So now this time we need to mount the antenna this way to perform our H plane. But when we, when we mounted it like that and we move it, remember that the direction of electric field is now in this direction. So the polarization of the transmit antenna should be vertical so that I can collect copole H plane. Now, if you wanna collect cross pole H plane, you're gonna keep the antenna on the test the same, but then you rotate the polarization of the transmitting antenna 90 degrees. So this is gonna give you cross pole H plane. Now, the setup that I have right now, the setup that I have right now is for E plane. 
So if I if I use it like that, the, this antenna is mounted like this with this aperture. So this is the the structure to collect E plane, and the polarization of the transmit is also horizontally polarized. So I can if I if I start the measurement right now, that's going to be the E plane pattern of the antenna under test in the copole. So let's do that and see what we're going to get. So to start our measurement, I need to start the RF generator. So this beeping, as you know, is an indication that it's transmitting. Now I'm going to go to the software and I'm going to press a start acquisition. And later on, I'm going to show you also what the software is plotting. Okay, as, as you see now, the antenna on their test is rotating. And so, I mean, I, ideally I shouldn't be here. I need, this needs to be as close as possible to the free space, but I'm just here to explain this a little bit. For example, now we are completely at the back side of the open-ended waveguide. So at this point we are approaching our null and now we're, we're again approaching our the direction of maximum radiation. So later on, you can take a look at the E-plane pattern of this antenna. Okay, now we're done with 360 degree movement and we can stop the RF generator. Okay, we have now our open-ended waveguide antenna in uh, the E-plane configuration mode the polarization of the transmit antenna is matched so that we're gonna be collecting copole e-plane i'm gonna press start acquisition and start collecting our radiation pattern if you look at the right by the way you see that i applied 15 db of attenuation i already tried it with no attenuation and still we have the saturation issue so uh, we have it at under uh, 15 dB. The other thing to note is that the transmit and receive antenna distance, the separation between these two antennas, have been increased to 1.5 meter according to the student user guide. So now we are almost uh, done with the collection. Uh, I mean, this collection is not perfect. Uh, I need to uh, place absorber appropriately and uh, do a, a, some fine adjustment. But the main purpose here is to do a couple of comparison, especially with the H plane. So now I'm just going to store it under E plane. And uh, now we can also, for consistency, move the maximum signal level to zero degrees so now we can take a look at the pattern that we have and uh, if you look at the right column you see that the maximum signal level is minus 7.36 in this case keep in mind that we had this 15 db attenuation and also the half power beam width recorded uh, is 70.36 Six, six. Now we we can we can do a couple of things at this point. One thing that we can do is to uh, collect the cross pole e plane. We could we could just do that and see what's gonna happen. Okay, now our antenna is set up in the e plane because it's difficult to see. I'm gonna show you an aperture here, which is similar to the way that we mounted the antenna. So this is the aperture of a waveguide so our the aperture is mounted in the vertical way remember that the direction of the electric field over the aperture is in this direction so it's uh, in the narrow side of the aperture so this is essentially the antenna under test so the copole would be this horizontal polarization the, the way that the horn antenna has been mounted uh, in this measurement system is like this 
So if you if you look through the aperture here, you see that the waveguide, which is the which trans transition to horn, is also oriented vertically. So the electric field that is transmitting is also horizontal. So the antenna on the test was horizontal, uh, expecting horizontal polarization, and the transmitting antenna uh, will also provide the same polarization. Now, if I want to create polarization mismatch between them, if I rotate the antenna under test 90 degree, now the electric field that is going to transmit would be vertically polarized. So I'm going to I'm going to keep it like that and keep the antenna under test in terms of aperture similar to this. Now you see that if you look through the horn, you see that that waveguide which feeds the horn has 90 degree rotation compared to the aperture of this antenna here. And that's the way that we're going to create uh, our cross pole pattern. So I'm going to keep my antenna in the E plane configuration. So it's going to rotate like this. And uh, this horn would be uh, the way that I'm, I'm keeping it right here would be the transmit antenna. So to do that, I need to I need to rotate the horn antenna right now 90 degree. So to do that, I just loosen it here, and there is another pin to rotate it 90 degree. Then I'm gonna place it here and we'll tighten this. So now, as you see, I haven't touched the uh, antenna under test. Now this is gonna send this polarization for us and the antenna under test expecting a horizontal polarization. So to start the data acquisition, I'm gonna press the RF power and it's beeping. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna start the acquisition. Okay, now we've rotated the transmitting antenna by 90 degree and kept the antenna under test the same. And therefore we have now polarization mismatch and we start our acquisition. So as you can easily see, if this is this was the pattern that we we collected with the same uh, uh, configuration when the polarization of the transmit antenna was correct now as you see here when we have the polarization mismatch we get a very a small signal so so that essentially shows that the the cross pole level is is very low Okay, now this is done and uh, we can store it under document 2 uh, under e-plane uh, and more accurately cross pole e-plane so uh, maybe that would be useful to note that the maximum signal level when we had the copole case was minus 7.36 remember that we are applying 15 dB attenuation and in this case is about minus 27 in the case of cross pole so the cross pole that we measured uh, in this case was 20 dB uh, smaller than the copole the last measurement that we've done was cross pole e-plane so the aperture of the antenna under test was like this or if that's easier to see was like this so this rectangular uh, aperture was positioned vertically so that was e plane rotation for the antenna under test and if you look at the horn antenna horn antenna right now is mounted like this in the uh, lab wolf antenna measurement system so as you see if you look at if you look through the waveguide from this opening you see that it's not matched with the aperture of the antenna under test so that's our 
cross pole E plane. Now, to go to H plane, I need to rotate the antenna under test 90 degree. So now, if this is going to be the antenna under test, which is going to be rotating 90 degree, so that's for H plane. And the, the antenna under test is mounted right now like this, which is perfect for copole H plane, because if you look through the horn and you see the waveguide, and you look at the, uh, the aperture that I have right now, both of them are matched. So that would make it copole H plane. So what I need to do, I need to go and rotate the antenna under test by 90 degree, and I don't need to change anything with respect to the uh, transmit antenna. So let's, let's do that. Okay, so this is our antenna under test right now. So I can just loosen this a little bit. And I'm going to use the other pin to rotate it 90 degree. And when I'm going to place it, I keep in mind that this is the axis of rotation. So I want my aperture to, to be along this axis of rotation. So which is the case right now. And I'm just going to tighten it. So, so things seem to be ready. And now I, what I need to do, I need to start the RF power. And I'll go here and start the acquisition. But just before starting the acquisition, remember that right now, this is the polarization that the antenna, the transmitting antenna uh, transmitting and the the receiving antenna, which is antenna under test, is also expecting this vertical polarization. So that's why I'm saying this is copole and uh, this is rotating to collect H plane. So let's uh, start our data collection. OK, now we want to measure copole H plane. So everything has been set up to measure copole H-plane. The only thing I need to do is to start the acquisition. Now, the most important thing here is to note that H-plane for this antenna is much more directive than the E-plane. So if you, if you compare that with the dipole antenna that we measured earlier, you see that this is this is reverse. In this case, H plane is more directive, and that has to do with the fact that if you look at the antenna in the H plane, the size of the antenna is larger than the size of the antenna in the E plane. So now it is almost done. And the only thing I need to do is to be consistent with, so before doing anything, I'm just going to store it under document 1H plane. So I just stored it. And uh, if I want to be consistent, I need to rotate it to zero degree the, uh, in terms of maximum signal level to be at zero degree. Now it is at zero degree and you can compare it to E plane. So this is right now my mouse shows the E plane and now I'm showing the H plane. Now what I want you to pay attention here would be E plane around here and H plane around here. So in other words, I want you to pay attention to the maximum of signal which I adjusted to be at zero degrees. Ideally, if the measurement is done perfectly these two needs to need to match we also talked about it when we discussed uh, dipole antenna so but right now i have probably about 2 db difference between them which is not perfect but uh, but uh, i'm my purpose here is not to uh, make it very accurate at this point but just wanted to tell you that please always check that maybe with, with this uh, training system we can accept that but uh, 2db is generally a, a big difference between this these two values and I want you to think 
why this should, should be on top of each other. So this point that I'm here with the mouse and this point should intersect. So think about this and uh, just accept this for now as measurement error. Now, as you see, the H plane is much more directive than E plane. This is my E plane is much more directive. And this also, the indication for that is also in the half power beam widths. The half power beam widths that our system collected for us in the E plane is about 71 degrees and for the H plane is about 62 degrees. So although they're not very accurate, but it, it actually shows that uh, the H plane is more directive in this case, or I can Okay, we just finished our copole H plane. So the only thing that remains here would be to perform cross pole H plane. Now to do cross pole H plane, we're not going to do anything to the antenna under test. We're just going to rotate the transmitting antenna by 90 degree to change its polarization. So we can just loosen this up a little bit and rotate the polarization and tighten the whole thing. Now the system is ready to do the measurements. Okay, let's do the cross pole H plane uh, data collection. So we're gonna go to the acquisition and start the acquisition. So similar to cross pole E plane, you see that also cross pole H plane, which is now being plotted by white color here is extremely small and that essentially shows that our cross pole level for this antenna is very small. So now the measurement is almost done. So let me save it under document 2, under H plane of document 2. We dedicated H plane uh, document 2 to cross pole measurement. Now, if we look at the right column, we see that for the copole H plane, the maximum signal level was about minus 9 dB. Remember that we had this 15 dB attenuation for everything. So that was minus 9. And for the cross pole H, the maximum signal is about minus 25. So it's about, in this measurement, is about 16 dB smaller than copole. So to, uh, to summarize, this was our, this highlighted one with the, the, with the, that I'm showing with the mouse is copole H plane. This was our copole E plane. And this tiny signal here was our cross pole for the E plane and H plane. In this experiment, we want to figure out what would be the effect of having a ground plane, a metallic plane between the transmit antenna and the receive antenna. Right now, uh, we are in the H plane setup. So, uh, and the polarization that you see that's coming from the uh, horn antenna is vertically polarized and uh, also the polarization that the receiving antenna is expecting is also vertically polarized. So uh, the first part of the experiment would be for me to look for the angle at which I have the maximum reception by the receive antenna. To do that, I'm just going to loosen this a little bit. And I have the screen of computer, uh, I can look at the screen of computer and I can look at the receive signal. Remember that I had 15 dB, so the number that attenuation. So the number that I'm uh, reading for you is considering 15 dB attenuation. Right now, I'm uh, what the software sh shows me is about minus 16 dB uh, reception. Now, as I rotate it toward the antenna right now, for example, I'm at minus 11. Now here, I'm at minus 
here. at minus 8.9 or minus 9. So so it seems really the max that I'm receiving in this case is around minus 8.7, 8.8. And this is minus 8.8 .8 and I'm going to tighten it. So when I tighten it, I might change the angular uh, location a little bit. So I'm going to read it again. So when I'm here, I'm at minus 8.7 minus 8.8. .8. It's fluctuating between that. So let's, let's call it minus 8.7. Now, this is minus 8.7. And now I have a ground plane, a metallic ground plane. And I'm going to keep this about 20 centimeter away from the transmit antenna. And I'm going to read also what is the reception that I have. The first one that I'm going to do would be like that. So I'm going to have that. And I'm going to bring it. And I'm going to place it like this. So now when I do something like that, it's about 20 centimeter away, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me be more accurate and do it with a ruler. So twenty centimeter I'm about here. So now when I when I read this signal. It is almost at minus 21. So this is minus 21. And the reason is, uh, I'm going to discuss the reason after a second, another experiment. So this is about minus 21. And sometimes it goes even below that. So it, as you see, it actually reduced the signal significantly. Now let's go to the other one. And in this case, I'm going to keep the ground plane the same distance. So it is a still 20. But now what I'm going to do is that this is horizontal now. Now this is minus 10, which is fantastic because I think uh, earlier the original one was about minus 8.7. And so it's not a big change. It, 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 we are at minus 10.5 right now, for example. So you see that from minus 8.7, we're just doing that. We get to minus 10.1, minus 10. And as soon as I have it like this, we go to about minus 20 dB. So this is the reason for that is that, remember, the electric field that's coming from the horn antenna is like that. It's the vertical polarization. Now, if I have the metallic ground plane in this configuration, that's going to create problem because, as you know, the tangential electric field over the surface of the metal will go to zero. Uh, to be more accurate, over the surface of perfect electric conductor. So you are significantly disturbing the radiation from the antenna. So the electric field over the surface of PEC should be normal to the PEC. But here I have this component is actually tangential. So it significantly changed uh, the reception. But as soon as I put it like that, this electric field that's coming, it's perpendicular to this surface. So the change would be minimal at the at the receive signal. So that's the, that's the importance of the boundary condition in this situation. So uh, so this this actually shows that how a ground plane can change the received signal.